Hi, this is Alice Smith. I'm really sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my planned uh, Fulbright um, with you, at least virtually, and I hope I get to meet all of you in person very soon. I'll be arriving in Chile at the beginning of April. So this is my um, Fulbright. It uh, contains research, which will be in Container Depot Logistics. I will be teaching a course in Fuzzy Systems, and I'm also interested in furthering um, the pr promotion of women in engineering. So I'm going to talk briefly about all of those. My current university is Auburn University, uh, which is located about 100 miles from Atlanta, Georgia. It's in Alabama and it's the land-grant University of Alabama. You can see it's a fairly large university. It's also a fairly old university uh, by American or U.S. standards. So it's a traditional campus. It has um, red brick buildings for the most part and a lot of green space, which will be really different from my host university in Chile, uh, which is the Catholic University of Chile at Valparaiso which has a very urban campus. So that'll be a, an interesting change for me. And another change is the moving from American football to soccer or what everyone else calls football in the world. And American football is very popular at Auburn. You can see our stadium, which seats nearly 90,000 people. So my background is multidisciplinary. I have a bachelor's in civil engineering from Rice University in Houston, Texas, a master's in business administration from St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri, and a PhD in engineering management from the Missouri University of Science and Technology, uh, which is also in Missouri. I worked uh, in telecommunications at Southwestern Bell, which is now part of AT&T. And it was during this work experience that I went to school part-time to get my MBA. When I graduated in 1991 with my PhD, I went to work uh, uh, at the Department of Industrial Engineering at the University of Pittsburgh, located in Pennsylvania. And then I moved to Auburn University in 1999 when I had a chance to be the department chair. I spent 12 uh, long years as department chair there and for the past five years I've been on the faculty doing the regular faculty stuff. So my research is quite diverse and multidisciplinary. It's modeling and optimization of complex systems with techniques inspired by nature. So I do mainly empirical modeling and heuristic or inexact optimization of complex systems, which complex systems might range from anything including manufacturing processes. And you can see at the picture at the top right, that was one of my first research projects, which was to improve the manufacture of uh, sanitary ware, in this case, low water toilets, when I was working with ceramic engineers at a company, uh, to logistics, uh, to modeling financial information, um, telecommunication networks. So I've been involved in a lot of different uh, research endeavors, which I'm kind of a research omnivore, so I really like learning new things and working on new projects. Uh, my current work is funded by NASA. I have a long-time NASA grant involving uh, improved mission assurance and quality assurance for payloads. And I also have a couple projects defense-oriented uh, mainly involved with the modeling of defense systems and their improved analysis and configurations. The Fulbright program has been very generous with me and I've been happy to engage with it. In 2013, I was on sabbatical for a semester and was a senior Fulbright fellow at Bill Kent University, which is in Ankara, Turkey. It's very different from the one I'm going to have in Chile because that was a teaching only Fulbrights and I taught undergraduate students. Last year I was a Fulbright specialist at AFIT. AFIT's a university in Medellin, Colombia. And the specialist program, if you're not familiar with it, is for short-term stays. So I stayed two and a half weeks teaching logistics 
to a variety of students who are also uh, working full time and going to school at night. And one of my passions is international collaborations. I've had extensive international collaborations. And my first introduction to Chile was during one of those. In 2014, I organized and hosted a workshop funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation on logistics uh, for the Western Hemisphere. And it was hosted and took place at University in Chile, the Catholic University in Santiago. And this picture at the, at the lower right is from that workshop. And we took a field visit to a couple places, one of which is the Port of Valparaiso. And that got me started on working on research in ports and being more interested to be able to come to Chile to work firsthand on that. So this is an overview of my Fulbright. I'll be at PUCV um, in Valparaiso for three months, April, May, and June. And my research involves empty container depots. So the faculty at PUCV are quite expert in uh, port uh, logistics and, and port issues and problems and improvements because the port is such an important part of Valparaiso. Also, there's other nearby ports, for example, the Port of San Antonio. So I have never worked in ports, but I've worked quite a bit in logistics systems and improving them. And so that's how we decided to come together to work on this topic. And the topic we decided is one that has not been researched hardly at all, and that pertains to the empty container depots. And these empty container depots, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them. They have some distinct um, challenges and functions from the actual port at the water side. And I've already talked about, I'm going to be teaching a graduate course in fuzzy systems and identifying best practices for recruitment, retention, and advancement of women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, otherwise known as STEM. So this tells you a little bit about empty container depots. These have proliferated recently in global supply chains because the real estate uh, of the port area is so limited and so valuable. And this is so true in Valparaiso, which is a historic part and is uh, landlocked by the city and so there's no room for expansion at the port itself. So these empty container depots are located inland where the land is cheaper and there's better access to trucks. And basically they serve a couple functions. Uh, the empty containers that are um, empty after unloading from the shipping are taken by truck to the empty container depot. At the empty container depot, they are um, checked over to see if they need maintenance or repairs. If that's true, then usually the maintenance is done at the empty container depot. And then the containers are stored there from anywhere from a couple days to a couple months until they are needed again on outbound uh, transport. Then they will be picked up by trucks in an empty um, state and then taken to ports where they're loaded with uh, goods and materials and go off on ships. So um, the empty container depot is a, a pretty simple place. As you can see, it's basically an area that's, of course, secured by a fence, has some offices, but most of it is just an open area where containers are stacked. Uh, in rows and bays and stacked vertically in tiers. And so there's really not a lot of infrastructure and the configuration is fairly free form. So there's some important decisions about um, operating and configuring empty container depots. Um, one of the objectives is to leverage resources and the resources other than the people employees are mainly equipment uh, that I'm showing you here which are small trucks and of course they're uh, operated by humans that actually unload the containers from a truck and stack them. They can reconfigure and move around containers in the yard 
and then they pick up containers and stack it on the truck for outgoing. And this is a couple of the, the popular trucks that do that. So here are some of the decisions uh, about an empty container depot. That includes the layout design. So how many rows and um, bays should there be? Uh, where should the transport be for both the trucks bringing the containers in and retrieving them and also the crane trucks that are actually moving the containers around. Um, another strategic decision is the actual contracts that are entered into by the shipping companies that own the containers and the uh, container depot. These are things that we're not going to be involved with. We're engineers and do technical things, but they are important in the decisions because they specify how long a container can stay at a yard without charge and then the, the charges incurred on a daily and then monthly basis and so on. The tactical decisions are going to be really important also in our project. That includes uh, how many cranes um, to have, and how many to work at a given time, personnel scheduling, and stacking policies. And by stacking policies, we mean where to place things, how high to go, uh, should we place all of the containers of a certain um, company together or split them up. Some of the operational decisions uh, include how which containers to retrieve when um, the trucks come in, how to move around and remarshal containers and when to do that. And the performance measures we're going to be focusing on are the resource utilization that I mentioned in the last slide, which has to do with the, the utilization of the people and the cranes, the container dwell time, in other words, how long do they spend in the yard, and the truck turnaround time, which is probably the most important. And that has to do with the time it takes a truck coming in to drop off a container until the mission has been accomplished and the truck is on its way or the reverse of that the time a truck has come in to pick up a container gets the containers on its way so we are actually working with a facility in Placilla. Placilla is uh, a part of Valparaiso that's inland it's actually up on the hill um, and it's an industrial zone. This is an overview of the particular facility we're working with. The faculty at PUCV have really good contacts in all of the ports and shipping, including these empty container depots. So it's been a, a great advantage to our resource research to actually work with actual company there to make sure our, our work is relevant and useful um, and can be implemented first on a trial basis and then hopefully permanently. So our methodology involves a couple technical aspects. First is the development of a discrete event simulation of the depot in Placilla and all of the internal movements. This simulation, which is a virtual environment in software, is interfaced with a database that contains the actual data from the Placilla depot. And that way, we'll be able to um, have the virtual environment uh, mimic the actual operations of the physical environment. And we'll be using the simulation or virtual environment to test uh, different um, solutions and recommendations we'd make regarding the layout or configuration of the depot and or the policies regarding stacking and retrieving. This way we'll be able to test things and calculate how they will perform without doing physical testing, which would be challenging in an operational depot. So, and along with the uh, virtual environment, we'll be doing optimization. In other words, we want to choose the best set of policies, operational policies, and the best configuration to um, put the best result in our particular metrics, especially in the time in and time out for the trucks. So I'll be teaching also a course at the graduate level for PUCV and fuzzy systems. 
We picked this course jointly together because it's uh, applicable to all engineering and technical majors. There's no background needed, so it's a standalone course. It's also a course that has not been taught at PUCV, and I hope one or more faculty members sit in so that they could potentially teach it in the future. Uh, you can see what I do. I do an introduction, but we focus mainly on applications, including data analysis and classification, and in fuzzy control systems. And as part of the hands-on activities of the course, I'll be bringing one or more of these little robots uh, with me to Chile, and the students will be able to develop a fuzzy um, control system of their own in software and then download it into the hardware on the robotic car and be able to test how their control system works. I've used this uh, approach in teaching it the, this course at Auburn. It was really effective to engage the students, so uh, I hope that also works out in Chile. So I'll be teaching in English, needless to say, but I have my teaching materials, including uh, my PowerPoint slides and my assignments translated to Spanish. So I hope that that will enhance the student understanding and learning. So one of the big advantages of my Fulbright in Chile is that my main host uh, faculty member, Jimena Pascal, is also female, and several of the other faculty members I'll be working closely with on this project are also women, and you can see, actually, that's me on the right with uh, these women. And that's really important to me because uh, in my department at Auburn, I am the only woman faculty member, so I get kind of lonely, and there are very few women faculty at my university in engineering. So one of the things I've liked to work on over the past really 30 years is to improve uh, the participation of women in engineering, and this is also of interest to the university in Chile and other universities in Chile. So. Uh, we're planning some activities. You can read them there to try to identify some best practices and provide an exchange of ideas. So these are some of my other goals. I've been studying Spanish for a few years online with Rosetta Stone, and my Spanish is still terrible. Um, I have no natural aptitude for language, although I love learning it. So I, th I hope to improve my Spanish through both using it on a more daily basis, but also perhaps taking one or more classes in person if I can arrange it in Valparaiso. I would like to make contact with some of the government agencies, the U.S. government agencies, uh, and perhaps their Chilean counterparts in Chile for looking at future uh, research projects, particularly in the defense arena. I've worked on a number of defense projects uh, in the U.S., and I think it would be really exciting to do a project involving defense, but was also of interest to Chile and, and some of the, the special applications that might be useful there. Uh, I plan to visit a university in Argentina and one in Peru to start some um, interactions. I've never been to either of those countries, and I've identified some contacts with uh, industrial engineering programs that have some commonalities uh, with both the ones that I'm working with in Chile, but also uh, my home university in the U.S. I would like to visit some other universities in Chile to give some seminars. I have a few contacts in Santiago, but I'm hoping some of you and also the Fulbright office can help me arrange uh, visits to some other cities, uh, universities that might have industrial engineering, but located outside of Valparaiso or Santiago. And finally, I started a research about a year ago on some wine logistics uh, with a faculty member at the Catholic University at Santiago. That work's gone really slowly, but I think there's a lot of promise looking at which um, fields to harvest and when and how to best utilize the limited resources, which include picking machines and personnel. So I'm hoping by being present in Chile that we can move that along also. So this is my contact information. Um, I'm very responsive by email. 
and you can see my website if you want to know more information. Again, I'm really sorry that my arrival date is too late to join you in person. I hope there's another chance for all of us Fulbrighters to get together um, while I'm in residency in Chile. Uh, but even if not, I hope that I can visit all or some of you, either at your place uh, where you're studying or in Valparaiso. If you haven't been to Valparaiso, you really need to come. It's an amazing city and the whole historic site is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So I would be really happy to host people and to show you around. Again, thank you very, very much and I appreciate your time and attention. Bye.